Um, welcome to the live stream for today. It is Thursday, right? I think it's Thursday, so I should be streaming today. Um, <clears throat> nice to see you all. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, please um, drop me a little comment to let me know if you can see me and hear me okay, and I'll see, uh, and then I'll feel a little bit better about um, nattering on as I paint. Uh, <clears throat> so second session today. I got up this morning, I started this one on Tuesday, streamed the first session live on Tuesday, um, and gradually realized, especially when I got up this morning and had a good look at it again, that I'd completely lost the form. So I spent a couple of hours working on it this morning. Um, bringing back the definition between the shadow and the light on the quinces. Let me change over to the um, change over to the camera on the painting. The light is not great today, although it's a, it's a bright day. Um, at this, there's the reference photo. I'm actually working from life. I think the colour is not all that accurate in that photo, but it's fairly close. Thank you, Kim. That's great to hear. So, um, palette, where's the palette? Show yourself palette. There we go. I am still toying with some stuff. I've mostly been doing a second layer on the quinces. Haven't done anything with the leaves today. I've messed with the background a little bit because the background had also got kind of yellow and the whole painting was looking yellow and I wasn't so keen about that. So I'm trying out a few things in the background as I go, but mostly I'm concentrating on trying to get a clear definition between the light and the shadow side of the quinces today. Um, paint is going on fairly thick now, in the lights especially. I've got a bunch of colours mixed already here from light to shadow. I have a more of an orange yellow and a green yellow here, so that I can kind of move between the two as I feel like it. Hello, Ginia, nice to see you. So, uh, basically, I'm just going to continue with what I'm already doing today. Um, I hopefully won't zone out too much because I'm in a, I'm at a point with this painting where I, I feel like it could go a few different ways, but the, the main thing I needed to sort out, and I think I've got, I'm, I'm getting there now, is the clarity of the form on the quinces. Um, the camera, I think, is maybe struggling a little bit with the light. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to try to. Um, going to have to try and sort something out. Let's have a look. I'm trying to get the the. Mm, that's probably not as good. I'm trying to get the picture on the screen to to look closer to what I, I can see when I'm painting. <laughs> I think that's fairly close. It's difficult to judge though. Um, probably something like that, I think. Mm, looks about right, I think. So yeah, mostly, been mostly working on the one on the left and the one on the right, this is mostly what I did earlier on was just to bring in a stronger shadow, a little bit of reflected light. Um, I haven't touched the light side on this one at all, I don't think yet today. And this one I've worked on a little bit more. Um, and I've brought in a little more definition of the, of the forms, but I'm trying to keep this really clear separation between the light and the shadow. The background has ended up getting maybe a little bit heavy around here. Um, I liked it when it was all looking like this, very brushy with quite a bit of the panel showing. So I may, may want to change some of that, I'm not sure. Thank you. 
So I'm still really just looking, trying to look carefully and um, decide what I need to do to, to bring out the form further. Um, the, the light side of the quinces was actually still fairly wet even after two days because most of the colours I've mixed with um, titanium white in the lights. So the light side still has quite a bit of uh, wet paint in it. On this side, I rubbed a thin layer of oleo gel over the shadows because the shadows were pretty dry so that I could work over, the, over that area again. So I'm looking at this bit here and I seem to have lost the definition of where this darker value here comes down there, which really shows the reflected light. It's ended up being kind of, with the paint going on a lot more thickly today, I suppose you could say almost kind of a muscular looking <laughs> quince. Good morning, Daniel, nice to see you. Uh, I don't know how long the light, the, how long the light is gonna last today. I actually, um, I think I made a bit of a mistake on Tuesday when the light really went about halfway through the stream and I quickly set up an artificial light. I use these newer LEDs like the LED lights when I paint by artificial light so that I could continue to stream. Um, and it ended up confusing um, the difference between the lights and the shadows quite a bit, I think. And I got into a bit of trouble with that. So that the, the shadows were then in a different different part of the, the surface of the quinces. And I kind of lost, the, I definitely lost the clarity, I think. So that's mostly what I've been doing today. Is bringing back a clear shadow and a light side to try and get that form showing through. And I'm just really, because I've got all the paints pre-mixed, I'm really just working with the values trying to be very careful with them in order to, you know, create a clearer feeling of where, which, which each area of the quince, whether it's in light or it's in shadow. Probably not going to be talking a huge amount today. Um, because I really need to be very focused on what's happening on the painting in order to make sure I don't lose this, the form that I think is starting to come now. The actual quinces are aging a little bit uh, from, from how they looked when I took the photo yesterday in a nice way. They, they look like they're kind of getting a little bit more character with. So I'm just trying to paint with a little bit more subtlety today and a bit more care. I'm leaving the background, I made some changes to the background which I'm leaving to stand for a little while while I decide if I like them or not. I felt like the colour balance of the whole painting was pushing a little bit far too far towards green yellow and there was nothing really to alleviate it so I played a little bit with the colours there but I haven't quite decided if it's a, I think it's a good change or not. So whilst I'm doing the bit that I think I need to work on most which is the form of the quinces I can um, leave the background to sit and perhaps change it a little bit. Quite tempted to scrape off this bit and see what's underneath. I wonder what is under there. 
what I would find if I scraped this. Hmm. Yeah, it had gone kind of yellowy over there, and at first I didn't like it, and, and now I'm thinking that's. I started adding a bit of chroma with a, 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 around a reddish sort of hue, and I'm not really 100% decided if I like it or not. So you can see if I scrape it back, there's a little bit more of that. Green issue underneath is still shine. Thank you, Chady. Hello, Christy. Nice to see you too. Yeah, I should be back, um, at least for the foreseeable future. Olaf, good to see you. For the foreseeable uh, future, I should be streaming again on Tuesdays and uh, and Thursdays. I'm going to have, I'm going to be starting in about a fortnight's time, possibly slightly less. I'm going to be starting another online workshop. Um, so may not be online quite as much, but this time round I'm going to attempt to um, to still carry on streaming whilst I teach the workshop. I did the last one, we, we last workshop, which was flower painting, we did two live sessions a week. Um, and I think it was perhaps a little intense for some people and it would be better if there was more opportunity to um, to work on things between the workshops, between the live sessions. So I think for this one, I want to add some, let's say exercises as well that will help with developing particular skills. So I think for the next workshop, my plan is to have most of the time one live stream a week and uh, and one recorded video of an exercise which is kind of optional to do if people would like to do it seems like it might be a good way to approach things Because the live sessions are a lot of fun and I think um, people generally seem to learn a lot from them but they are they're kind of demanding because if you're painting along with me you need to be able to watch and paint at the same time uh, and what some people have ended up doing is watching the live session and then doing the painting from it later um, watching and taking notes and then doing the painting part later and I think that has been working quite well for some people so I'm thinking for this time round we'll, I'm going to try doing something a little bit in between the two but always trying to um, the same as painting I would never 
answer that I, you know, I really have teaching sorted and don't have anything to learn about it. I, I try, I'm trying new things all the time um, to improve the way I teach online. Let's clarify this shape, make it stronger. <clears throat> and at the moment, that's where I'm, I'm heading up. Usually I, I, I change things based on feedback from people, how it seems that people are finding the sessions. But I do, I love to teach live. I think it's the best way because people can ask questions as we go. And in a sense, even if it's kind of, it's it can be a little bit intense trying to keep up. It, it, there's a, there can be um, an advantage to that because it stops you fiddling too much and means you just have to concentrate on the big shapes. And I think that's, um, it's a really important thing. Thank you, Isaac. Oh, were you locked down, JD? Right, yeah, I think it's going to be coming to us all again quite soon. Um, very possibly. We're, uh, I think we're not too bad over where we are at the moment, but um, in terms of rate of incidence of cases and stuff like that, but I've no doubt that... Mm, too dark. I've no doubt that something similar will be coming our way soon too. So once I was like reasonably happy that I'd brought the main forms back, the big light shadow forms, I started doing the, the bit that I'm working on now, which is trying to resolve like the smaller forms within those. Hello, Jane. <laughs> yeah, come to, come to the UK in autumn. I've got plenty of quinces. Um, funny thing though, I've painted them quite a few times, but I'm not sure I've ever eaten one myself. Isn't that strange though? Perhaps because I paint them and they never, they sit around too long and then they're, you know, you wouldn't really want to be eating them. I think now this background here has got too light. I think that's too light. I think I want that to come down in value. Um, a little bit. So for the light side of the background, this is my this is my starting color here. It's basically a really low chroma orange, red orange. So I'm using titanium white, raw umber, and what I just did then, which is um, way too much transparent red oxide, which has sent it to orange. But actually, the actual background is, is um, a piece of card that I painted very roughly to make a background. Maybe I might, I might let a bit more of that chroma come into the background there too. I want it to be a little darker. That's definitely more chroma. I don't think it's too much though. I just feel like it's got a bit too... Maybe the value is too high up here and it wants to come down a little.
so that this is a kind of a pool of light, you know, in front of the quinces here. And I'm, I'm putting it on with a knife because, well, just because it happened, but I'd rather have more texture than less up there. And being as I can't have this brushy and thin anymore because I've already worked over it quite a bit. I'll, um, I'll use the knife to bring in some texture. So I know already that I'm going to have to go in and re restate the um, the edges of these leaves. because they've become blurred. They were really nice when I first painted them into the couch. You can never kind of, I always feel like you can never kind of completely recreate that feeling of the couch in the first session. Um, but now I've, I've messed about with the background around them quite a lot, trying different things. So I'm going to have to restate the edges of the leaves at some point. Quince pie with honey. That sounds nice. Mmm. Yeah, that does sound nice. Quince jam on toast. Wow, all of these quince recipes. I should really try some. For sure, I'll try some quince recipes. There's this weird kind of ye yellow colour has come into the background there that I'm not keen on as well. Um, not keen at all. So this is just ivory black, raw umber and titanium white, which I use a lot with varying amounts of raw umber to, um, to create like a near neutral. That kind of yellow tinge there that somehow crept into the paint is disturbing me a little. I'm not trying to paint the, the background or the ground colours exactly the same hue as they are in the painting. I, I just want it to, um, as they are in the photo, sorry. I want it to work in the, in the painting. Small round quinces. Yeah, these are, these are big. I mean, these are, let me show you, I've got another one here. I almost painted this one. You can see it in my hand, you know, it's, these are big. <laughs> Lovely, great big quinces.
So I wonder if I can bring in a reflected light in this shadow up a notch. Because there is, there's quite a lot of reflected light here, in here, in this shadow, bouncing off the quince and back in to the shadow. It's not as obvious in the actual setup as it appears in the photo. I think it's one of the things that photos tend to do is overstate the values a little. And it's also like, um, it's a real danger with painting is overstating reflected light or any any value relationship. You, if you look right at it, we'll tend to stand out more. Um, and there's a real temptation to overstate things. And uh, it's one of the tricky things about painting, I think, is being is remembering to, to stand back and look at the whole, keep relating everything back to the whole. So I decided at some point today that sometimes I paint very loosely and sometimes more, I suppose you could say, more resolved and tightly. And I decided at some point today that this one was going to be I really wanted to bring the form of these quinces out. I wanted to uh, kind of enjoy painting them, I suppose, and perhaps resolve them a little bit more than I sometimes would. Hopefully without losing the overall. You know, value balance. Which is always the challenge. Once you start getting into the smaller forms. Morning, Brenda. Nice to see you. Yeah, I like I like a lot of texture in the background, John. I'm guessing you're Spanish. <laughs> I like a lot of texture in the background here. I'm gonna. I can't really get in there to scrape off with the palette knife. I'm wondering if I get a rough brush, I can scrape it back with that. You find so this is uh, no, not that one. Too soft. What I really want is like a small, bright, or I'll try this one. I've got some work, I think, to do on this edge anyway, so it doesn't matter if I destroy it a little bit. Yeah, gradually, I put in that kind of red and gradually it slowly removed it again. I think I just decided pretty much for sure that it's not what I wanted there. to I really want to give these quinces like a, a presence you know I want them to really have like a strong form Because when, when I look at them, that's that's what I feel, you know, it's they're very strong kind of muscular sort of shapes. And I really want to bring out that lumpy textural kind of quality they have. And just I suppose just enjoy painting the form. without kind of trying to overthink it too much. Ah, everybody likes that glowy light. But the problem is if you overdo it, if you put too much in it, kind of um, 
it destroys the form a little bit. You made me look at it again now and I've just seen the bit that I want to add. The problem is if you if you raise the value too much, it's mostly about the value. If you raise the value too much, it actually um, has the opposite effect than the one you want and, and kind of destroys the form a little. You need to be very careful with it. So some parts of this painting I haven't really decided how much I want to resolve it really quite yet. Uh, I'm kind of feeling that this quince over here might not be far off. It really is a joy to to paint all of these little bumps and textural areas. I'm mostly looking for places where I feel I've made small mistakes, perhaps with the values, and need to revisit them a little bit. until I feel I'm really kind of getting that lumpiness, but without it becoming like, I suppose, too heavy. Yeah, that's what we want. We want the personality, the thingness, we want the thingness of it. Very technical painterly term. All the best painting books talk about the thingness. I'm kidding, of course. Sometimes I come out with stuff when I'm painting, I just think, what am I talking about? It doesn't make any sense at all. Because I don't quite have the words, which I suppose is why we paint. I don't always have the words. Feeling this is a bit heavy back here. So as long as I've got good light, I'll probably keep painting today. I think I want more chroma back here still. Perhaps. Let's try something else. I'm kind of, I'm popping over to the quince and then over to the background. I like this area around here. Not completely convinced with the background yet.
If anyone's not sure what I mean when I say chroma, I just mean a slightly more intense color, less gray. Um, term comes from Munsell. Studio cat wants out. No, little fella. Here we go. This is dry, so I could probably glaze something over that if I wanted to, at least fairly dry. I'm feeling happier as I'm adding chroma. I think it was... I didn't like the hue that I had before. I added chroma to the background and then took it out and I think it was the hue that I didn't like more than the chroma. I'm glad I dropped this value here a little bit because I think it's this is standing out more but I wonder if this is a little bit too gray I need to decide I think might work there. Not having any great inspirations at the moment. <laughs> Just trying to think. Yeah, thanks, Ginny. Yeah, I thought it, it helped, like scraping it away and then laying on a little more. It was getting a little bit heavy there, I think. I brought the value down a little bit here as well. Thank you, Carol. Still, obviously, we'll need to sort out these areas where I haven't put any more chroma in. I'm just trying it very roughly at the moment. Um, the leaves I'll probably get to last because I have a strong feeling that they're not going to need very much. I won't know what they need until... I feel like, anyway, I won't really know what they need until I get a bit more done on the rest of the painting. And I'm also wondering about something here. Like, you know, I've got some more quince leaves and I was actually wondering about if I had a, another leaf... Just a shape. To kind of bring this 
out more. Undecided. You can actually solve this problem here though, if I do have a leaf, like this big quince leaf here, then I can add this kind of very low chroma green. I'm just kind of squinting right down so I can kind of see this just as, as like a design, just like a collection of shapes, really. Let's see if I think it might help. And trying different places for it. I kind of feel like that collar would be nice there. And there's quite a lot here without anything happening. working very slowly today because I'm I feel like I still have a few things to figure out and what I don't want to do is you know you can see I'm still adjusting a lot of stuff in the background and trying to decide like I would I like that color there and I do like that color there Let's mix up that color. Here, look, I've got the leaf on the palette now. I'm gonna mix that color. Let's see. Mm. Oh, cat wants back in. He goes out, he comes in, he goes out, he comes in. Coming in? Come on. I, I can't really pick you up at the moment though. What is it? Do you want outside? Oh, okay. He wants to go out. We've got a nice sunny day here today. We've had very few of those lately. I have a shape problem here. I just noticed. Value problem there, but the shadow is not dark enough. So let's say I wanted this color, I'll start with something which I think is going to be fairly close. Like, um, this is Michael Harding uh, green gold, it's the pigment voice. PY129, Ergazine Yellow, Ergazine. It's way too dark, obviously, so if I bring it up to about the value that I want with white. Too much chroma and it's too yellow. If I had a, a blue-gray of the same value, Use that to swing the hue a little bit and uh, drop the chroma. Yeah, I was 
wrong about the other. Closer to the chroma, but it's uh, closer to the value, but too not yellow enough. I mean, a little bit of yellow oak, it's a bit too dark, it's white. Sometimes I mix like extremely carefully, and sometimes I mix kind of quicker on the fly like this. Looking for um, a good match of the leaf. Too dark straight on like that, so it would want to be. If it had the light on it, I don't want to lose too much chroma, so I'm bringing some yellow in as well. Yeah, I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave that there and think about it for a little bit. I'm not entirely sure that I will add a leaf there, but it kind of feels like the composition could do with something there. Maybe there would be some shadow as well. If I decide to put it in, what I'll probably do is um, place it on the on the still life stand. And then paint it. I, would, I won't just make it up because the likelihood of me turning out a good leaf just trying to make it up is really pretty low. I'm just mixing up a shadow colour for that leaf because there would probably be a bit of shadow as well. So I just want to see like if there were a dark, a dark shape there too. Like compositionally speaking that you know, in terms of the design, how would it work? Not sure, let it sit there for a bit and think about it. Yeah, I could for shorten the ledge. I, I generally don't, generally don't like doing that. I don't. I, I find the the hard um, horizontal going right across. I, I usually don't. I prefer not to do them usually. Just kind of personal taste, I suppose, more than anything. We'd have a shadow anyway. I think it would want to be more over there. I'm really just curious, like compositionally, what would happen if I had something there. I'm feeling um, it wouldn't want to be there though. Or if, if it was there, then there would need to be something like over here too. 
that's better, I think, because this that kind of makes more of that sort of diagonal. So I've got loads of leaves on these quinces, so I can fairly easily like either put some a couple of little leaves in, or I can take the leaf that I've already got in there and uh, and paint it from a couple of different angles. Definitely think I prefer it with something leading up. I don't, it's not, and then people think of this stuff as leading the eye, which um, it isn't. It's it's just purely design. Uh, leading the eye is a myth. You can't do it. You can't. Everybody looks at paintings differently. People look first at the areas that are the most psychologically interesting to them. Faces and hands. If you don't believe me, look up the Yarbus eye tracking experiments on the repping painting. There's quite a lot of, we don't have to guess about this stuff, there's quite a lot of research has been done. James Gurney's looked into it quite a, in quite a lot of depth as well and has some really good uh, blog posts on it. <clears throat> um, you can't control a viewer's eye path through your painting, you, you just can't do it. Didn't at all like what I just did there. I'm still pretty undecided about it. It just feels like something wants to happen there. And I haven't quite decided what yet. If anything, maybe nothing, maybe I just end up letting that dry and just scrape it all off. I'm trying, uh, mostly I'm just trying, I mean the colour, but also like um, values. Yeah, there's definitely a flow to composition, or, or at least there can be if that's if that's your your bag. If you have a look at Veronese, is my favourite to look at for that. What they call implied lines in a painting. Uh, Veronese and um, uh, Arthur Wesley Dow, I'm a big fan of as well. His compositions are, are beautiful and amazing. I think really simple sometimes, but just really nice flow to them. Thank you. That's very nice of you. Sky Art, I don't know what your real name is. It feels funny calling you Sky Art. But thank you very much. That's a really nice thing to say. I actually spent um, almost the entire from spring through summer this year painting flowers. So that's good to hear. <laughs> because I was determined to try and improve my flower painting this year. I think I did.
that's frustrating. I just want to change a little bit of the, on the cameras and I can't because uh, The software I use to control them while I'm painting has just crashed, which is really annoying. I think I'm going to go back to this quince. To the light side of this quince. Little. But before I do, my values have gone a bit haywire up here. So they're actually, um, these quinces have areas of lowish chroma yellows and um, a lot of the chromas are a lot lower than you might expect. Like I haven't just gone in with like cadmium yellow anywhere in them because I want to get fairly close to the color, color that I can see there. And um, If I went in just with straight cadmium yellow, they would be too chromatic. It wouldn't look right. At least for the kind of painting I'm trying to do, you know. I don't know what you'd call it. Would you call it realism, maybe? I don't know. I'm not sure. It almost seems like it doesn't really matter what we call it these days to me because the, the lines are so blurred. Um, I wonder if the days of movements, if you like, in a sense, are kind of over because movements in art would, would tend to happen in um, particular geographical areas. And now we have access to a huge range of different work from different people around the world. You know, so um, I suppose you could have online movements. But I kind of feel a little bit like the days of like particular movements like impressionism or realism, you know, that, that sprung up in particular areas. The naturalists in France. I kind of feel like those things are less likely to happen now and it's more of a... Diasporia, is that a word? Dias I don't know. And in a sense, I, I feel it doesn't really matter, you know. People, painters used to sit around writing manifestos. <laughs> I'd rather paint pictures. Manifestos for what art should be what they felt art should be. And anyone who was, who didn't follow their manifesto was, you know, should be vilified. But for me personally, I see so much different art that I really appreciate. It's all generally what you would call broadly realism. I've, I'm not, uh, not particularly taken with abstract art at all. It should be fairly obvious, but although I th there's a lot of abstract elements in, in this kind of painting, I think. But uh, I don't have anything against anyone who paints abstractly. I'm just not particularly interested in doing it myself. Um, now, now they sit around writing artist statements, says Jeff. I think you're right. <laughs> I think you're right. And put them on websites that no one ever visits. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> they write about themselves in the third person. On <laughs> websites that no one ever reads. But I think it's really exciting, you know, that there's so much um, different art around now. Uh, if anything, I think it's a kind of, it can be a confusing time to be a painter because there's so much beautiful work being made. 
I mean, I'm talking about the stuff I see online, on you know, on Instagram and stuff. Not like uh, I don't see it in galleries, but then I don't go to galleries much. Who does these days anyway? But I bring the values down and then I bring them back up. I'm still trying to find the exactly right balance there. I definitely like having something here, so I'm going to do something with these green blobs. Just not sure what yet. And maybe it would come back over as well. I'm just really just putting random shapes in. That's not, I don't like that because it's too evenly spaced. Looks unnatural. I think that's one thing you really kind of have to watch for is just putting things in in an orderly pattern because nature's not like that. At all. The dance, Christopher says, yeah. Like for me, <clears throat> sometimes I know exactly what I'm going for in a painting and I, and I just paint it. And this one is being a little bit more of a, um, an exploration. Um, I haven't decided really yet whether it's going to be one that I feel is a success or not. Hopefully it will be by the end. There are, there are parts of it that I like a lot at the moment. Also some parts I'm not so sure about. But I'm going to continue working on my on the quinces. I'm trying to bring out the forms more um, and see see where the painting goes. I think it's definitely going to be another another session yet yeah? for sure. This feels heavy to me there. Mm. I'm at a stage now where I really feel I need to kind of take a step away for a little while and uh, and have a think about what I want to do with it. Unfortunately, the, the chroma in the painting is actually higher than, I think, a little higher than it looks on the screen. Um, But I can't adjust it now because my software has crashed to have them sometime. Um, thanks very much for watching everyone today. I hope it was interesting. I feel like I just painted a bit and rambled aimlessly, which I suppose is what I mostly do on these streams. That I just paint. Turn on the cameras when I'm painting and just see what happens. The sessions I teach are not like this. <laughs> They're a bit more focused. Probably going to continue from this point, just resolving forms a little bit more and just and let some of the bits that I'm not sure about, like the background. There's something bothering me around here that I'm not this whole area around here that I feel is unresolved. Perhaps that this is too dark, maybe this side. I'm not sure that that, that needs a little bit more of a 
needs a bit of thought and maybe it just needs a bit of experimenting with and maybe something good will come out maybe nothing good will come out kind of feel like it wants something back there but I'm not quite sure what yet it doesn't feel it's it's drawing my attention which I don't want it to do. If it was right, it wouldn't be drawing my attention. It's a sign, I guess, that something is bothering me. It may be that I've let the value get too low. Or maybe the value's not low enough, I'm not sure. And it, some, some of it, what I want back there might become clearer once I've done a bit more around here, because I definitely feel I want to add something here. Some quince leaves. It's not entirely entirely sure what yet. So this is me in kind of um experimentation mode I suppose. <laughs> it's, it's getting more interesting now. What I might end up doing is just scraping a lot of texture into this and then glazing over it. It may be simply that it, I, what's bothering me about it is just that I feel like I've lost too much texture back there. I've lost too much life. This edge I'm gonna edge of this quince here I'm gonna have to redo. Hard to say. And it may be that you know I've got the photo of this. So it, of the setup, so it may be that I just put it away for a while. And, uh, and think about it. Maybe out of this unresolved area will come something more interesting that I haven't tried before. I'm thinking about at the moment is Hofset Pushman's work and Mil Carlson and the textures that they create in their backgrounds and maybe what I want to be doing is a lot of it is going to be finding the right value in the chroma in there. But maybe what I want to be doing as well is creating some kind of a texture. I just it was just feeling like heavy and not really how I wanted it to be so I'm just going to be patient with it <clears throat> and let it kind of maybe try a couple of things and see if it can as most of the background of scraped tough now see if it can tell me itself what it needs there So you'll know I'm scratching it up, I can glaze over all of this and, and have that still kind of showing through later, just very subtly. I know I said I was going to stop. I am actually going to stop. <laughs> I am, I am going to stop, honestly. Uh, Yeah, I, I think I'm going to have a cup of coffee and a sit and a think and maybe play with the background a little bit. I'm fairly happy with the way the quinces are going. Um, the form is a lot clearer now than it was when I started today. Um, I'm going to leave the leaves for now. I think the leaves probably aren't going to need very much work. Um, I definitely do feel that what I was missing here was texture and that it had gone a little bit too... it had gone flat. 
and it feels like it's it's getting something a little bit more interesting now. Um, thanks very much for watching. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I probably will still be on this painting next week, the way it's going at the moment. So I may well be streaming this one again next Tuesday. I've also got some really beautiful apples I might be working on as well. So we'll see. Um, thanks very much for watching uh, and I'll see you again.